I'm talking to Frank Zappa, who's over here in London now. I want to ask you first, Frank, because I haven't seen you for 20 years, about the children who are now grown up. And when I last saw them, they were tiny tots. In fact, two of them weren't even born. Moon That's really a tiny tot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a micro tot. That's right. Uh, Moon is what? She's about 20 now, is she? Yep. She was four years old when I last saw her. So you have three of them living with you now. Well, she's over at the house quite a bit anyway, even though she has her own place. But, yeah, the three of them are still there. And we hardly see Dweezil because he has his own career and he's wandering around promoting his new album. And Amit, who I don't think you've even No, I didn't know Amit. him, but he, what is he, 15 now? He's 13. 13, right. And Diva is 8. Thank you. The words of this song are by Diva. She live in a tree. They call her China in the bush. Rock. Larger than me. They call her China in the bush. Rock. Nine foot three. She's a China in the bush. Now she's a mystery. She's a China in the bush. They call her China in the bush. Rock. In the bush. Rock. China in the bush. Rock. In the bush. Rock. Where is she go? Frank Zappa, normal is a dirty word, and dirty words are one of his trademarks. Zappa's here with us this morning, along with his children, Moon Unit and Dweezil. Welcome, Zappas, to well, Night Watch. It's so nice to be here. <laughs> it's just terrific, simply terrific. You're getting to be seasonal with us. Yeah, right. You generic were... and seasonal. <laughs> Did you think it would come to this, that Zappa would be generic? You were... Well, it's sort of turned in, into something like Kleenex, but, you know. You, you are the standard bearer of the unusual in American culture. I eat a hot dog. It tastes real good. <laughs> then I watched a movie from Hollywood. I eat a hot dog. It tastes real good. Yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. yum, yum, yum. yum, yum. Then I watched a movie from Hollywood. Dum, dum. Yum, yum. Is that a heavy load to carry? Well, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. How we've suffered. <laughs> Poor thing. Yeah, really we, we have to welcome your children to the show. Can I say something? Uh-oh. Please don't mock the names of my children. From the man who named his children Moon Unit, Dweezil. Dweezil. I couldn't remember. And Dweezil. Diva. And Diva. Well, they're weird names. They're very weird. weird. Right. Now, can I ask you, I always wanted to ask you something about your, your kids' names. I don't, I don't, you too, I huh? You named your kids. Moon Unit, Dweezil, Amit Rodan, and Diva. Amit Amuka Rodan. Amika Rodan. Amuka. Uh, yeah. E M U U K H A. What are your children's names? The names of my children are Moon, Dweezil, Amit, and Diva. Okay. Wh why not Charles, Billy, Willie, and Sarah? I didn't feel like it. <laughs> it isn't Roadmap, isn't one of them? No. No. <laughs> and there isn't Weasel. It's no. And I saw your son, or one of your sons, on the Today Show this morning, and his name is... Dweezel. Dweezel. <laughs> now these are, uh, well, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but these are peculiar names for children. And then I don't have any children named Rabbit Hutch or Buick either. Uh, years ago I heard that you had just had a child that you had named Moon Unit. Mm -hmm. And everyone broke up laughing and thought, what a wonderful idea. Can't be serious. Uh, yeah, that's her name. Uh, well, she's what, 12 years old now. What do friends call her? Uh, they call her Moon. Moon. Did you ever regret the names Dweezil and Moon Unit? I mean, do you ever look back and say, why didn't I use Susie? Uh, well, I know why. I already used Susie for something else, but... Uh... <laughs> Did it ever occur to you that perhaps a child named Moon Unit might have certain uh, problems with the name? Uh, with people it saying, had occurred to me that, that, a, that, a, that a person who has a name like Mary is going to have some problems, too. <laughs> But not because of the name so much, you, you have to admit. Well, sure. I mean, no, no, How do you name. tell yourself from the next one? <laughs> oh, that. Uh, and the, the boy is the Moon, Moon, Moon? Two girls, two boys. Moon's a girl, Diva's a girl. Amit's a boy, Dweezil's a boy. I think they're both wonderful and very talented, and we've asked both of them to come on, so you know that. But why... Dweezil's here, by the way. Is she? Oh, can he, 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 I know, I know, I know. I was, <laughs> I was gonna say, because... <laughs> Take but two. now, why, why did you pick those kind of names? Didn't you know that would be a challenge for them? It's the last name that gets you in trouble. Now obviously, they have meanings to you. Yeah. 
What does moon unit mean? What's the origin of it? Well, um, her middle name unit is because she was the first family unit. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's t a technical name. Yeah, yeah. And uh, moon is a nice name. I mean, in other cultures, they have uh, girls have uh, the word moon for a name. You know, mm -hmm. in Spanish, it's Luna. Consider the beauty of a name like Ralph. Right. So it's, it's our ignorance that keeps us well, from being able to deal with it. Let's not be too rough on our own ignorance. I mean, after all, it's the thing that makes America great. <laughs> okay. Did they mind as children? Well, you know, I think everybody wonders about their name. I mean, they called me Frank. And if you're in, a, in an Italian family and somebody names you Frank, you get to be Frankie boy for a long time. Yeah. That's not so terrific. Yeah. Did your parents think you were talented when you said I'm going to go into music? My parents were not interested in talent. They were interested in having me do something good, like be an engineer. What kind of kid were you? Um, guy who got in trouble. Kid trouble too? Yeah. Have any fun? I know I was weird. You know this kind of standard uniform that the rap musicians wear, the hooded parka with the hood up and sunglasses on? That's what I used to wear to school every day. I had a little goatee and a little mustache. This couple that owned the chili place, Opal and Chester, uh, agreed to ask the man who serviced the jukebox to put in some of the song titles that I liked because I promised that I would dutifully keep pumping quarters into this thing so I could listen to them. And so I had the ability to eat good chili and listen to Three Hours Past Midnight by Johnny Guitar Watson for most of my junior and senior year. R&B is really your favorite. Is that yes, true? that's very true. Why? I just like the way it sounds, just like I like a cup of coffee and I like uh, rhythm and blues. And it's very rare to find people who uh, appreciate that kind of music. I mean, what most people today know about the music of the 50s is all sha -na -na derived uh, sort of freeze-dried uh, and very... It's been tidied up quite a bit, but I like the, the old rough stuff. But uh, Amit, one of the other funny names that you're talking about, he at one time wanted to change his name to Rick. We don't know why, but that blew over. Moon. Did you let him when he said I want, he wanted to change his name? He said, call me Rick, so we called him Rick for a while, and then, you know, yeah. smoothed out. Then Moon, at one time, wanted to be called Beauty Heart. <laughs> now, that lasted a little bit, and then went away, but Dweezil was an exception. I was wondering if, 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 if is he prone to being beaten up in the schoolyard, being called Dweezil? No, he's, he's not. Actually, he's a rather uh, sports-oriented, kind of, you know, aggressive little guy. He's you know. a tough little sucker. He wouldn't take any caca from you. When Dweezil was born, he was born natural childbirth, and that was at the Presbyterian Hospital here in Los Angeles. So when Gail was checking in, she was ready to deliver, you have to do all the paperwork and, you know, all that stuff. And this woman wanted to know what we're going to call the child, and I said, Dweezil. And she was pleading and begging, you know, <laughs> not, not to call the child Dweezil. So at that point... Um, it's like, we're not going to let you in unless you change the name of your baby. So, <laughs> so uh, I named four guys who were in the band that time. And that was Ian, Donald, Calvin, Euclid. That went on the birth certificate. Everybody thinks my name is German. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get this name? Dewey, I love it. Uh, Where did you get Dweezil? Uh, science. <laughs> Biology. Do, do you believe that? Your, yes, I absolutely do. <laughs> I absolutely we. do. Dweezil got to be about six or seven years old and finds out that on his birth certificate there are other names. He was very distressed about it and demanded to have his name legally changed to Dweezil. So we got a lawyer, and his name is officially Dweezil Dweezil. Zappa. When Moon Unit did her record, Valley Girl, yeah. did you have any idea what was going to happen out of that? I mean, that changed. That became part of American culture. As well. You, you have done the um, album with your dad, Valley Girl. Valley, oh, yeah. yeah. Hi. I'm still Frank Zappa. And this is my daughter, Moon. You know, 
know me, I'm like into the clean stuff, like cap now, I'm like, I don't know, MTV and stuff. <laughs> and has you have just turned the vocabulary in this country around. I heard someone, you know, pressing 50, go and gag me with a spoon <laughs> over the weekend. But what began as a spoof has kind of become a teenage craze. Kids everywhere are starting to talk and dress like the Valley Girls. Frank and Moon Zappa are in our ABC studio in Los Angeles to tell us about this trend. And good morning to both of you. Hi. <laughs> this uh, collaboration between the two of you, have you ever worked together before on a project? Yeah, on the last album. Uh-huh. Yeah. And do you want to be a singer, Moon? I'd like to do a musical or a Hawaiian Punch commercial or perhaps <laughs> <laughs> Me too, how about you? <laughs> Perhaps being in Encino Housewife. Uh -huh. uh, I'll start with you, Moon, because you go to school in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, want to tell us what a, a valley girl is really like? Uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> Why? Sure, they, they want to know. <laughs> uh, well, let's children. see. Well, what are the values? Their values. Uh, each person has their own different values, but basically they have none. You see, I don't want to break a, the hearts of a lot of people who really like this record. We've reached the point of cultural pollution now. <laughs> I have a relative who works in a bank. There are two Iranian girls who work in the bank. They've been here just a short time, and now these Iranian girls are saying, oh my God, and bag your face. But it turned out to be cute, and so everybody <laughs> thinks it's cute. Okay, it's a nice, cute record. <laughs> And, and what I what I read about the record, you you just you got her out of bed at midnight and said, "Come down here." And you, did you just ad lib what's on the on the record, or? Yes. Yeah, and the, the uh, results have been overwhelming, successfully for you folks. Ridiculous. Well, she was talking with a famous religious personage who uh, also was uh, using the dialect. Yes, um, he uh, thought he was being really cute, and he said, uh, "Oh, catastrophic," <laughs> and he's. Uh, um, is this someone we know? Uh, well, he was uh, Terrence Cook's like next guy down. I don't even know who he was. He just had a purple cap on a and a cape. I major, don't know. major <laughs> office in the Catholic oh, yeah. Church. Right? It, was, it was revving up to gag me with a spoon. <laughs> but hadn't it hadn't quite, hadn't quite yeah. gotten there yet. Originally, you named Moon Moon Unit, right? Right. Uh, and and now you've dropped the unit. No, I've kept it's the still unit. Still on the bus, yeah. Still on the uh, and and what exactly was going through your mind when? You, <laughs> You, you named her Moon Unit. Uh, has has it been a problem for you, uh, Moon, being known as Moon Unit? I like my name. Yeah. Uh, and what about uh, uh, the names of the other? Dweezil, Amit, and Diva. Yeah, Amit and Diva. Now, I know I, uh, I was reading that Amit actually wanted to change his name for a time, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, to what? Rick. 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 <laughs> When, he, when people called him Amit, they called him Amit Vomit. And then uh -huh. when he changed his name, when he changed his name to Rick, they called him Rick. <laughs> so he changed it back again. But actually, you know, they should just call him Amit. The <laughs> because as he matures, I'm sure that that's what will stick with him. Uh -huh. And you, Dweezil, have an album out now, too. You, what are you up to? I'm no angel. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Moon's not the only Zappa following in Dad's footsteps. 12-year-old son Dweezil played guitar on tour with Frank this summer. Well, let's talk about all the kind of fun stuff that we have for them on, on tonight, you know, on the channel, shall we? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Because you're reading the teleprompter, I'm not. <laughs> oh, reading? No, we're not reading. It's all off okay. the top of my head. <laughs> well, what is going to happen tonight? <laughs> okay. And our, uh, you know, this sort of thing was edited out of Angel Heart, you see. Are you aware different. of the fact that Nikola Tesla was the guy who invented alternating current? That's Children, do not try this at home. We couldn't exactly tell you for sure whether or not that involved the use of a condom. Imagine if you still had the patent on AC today. You could be a Republican <laughs> for the sake of children. Yeah. <laughs> like, what happened to the Beatles cartoons? They're not on this weekend? Those are your favorite ones, huh? <laughs> well, you know. That's sign language. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, there we go. go. <laughs>
<laughs> Sudafed, this mojo doodad. <laughs> and Lord, rebuke this congestion. <laughs> ah, there's a cataract in someone's left eye that just vanished. Anything you can't really uh, hang yourself and, and not hurt yourself, you see. The, the feet dangling is sort of, it's a special effect. Don't try it at home, really, okay? Thank Unless you so you're much. a Republican, then try it every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Dweezil, Dweezil is a sturdy little boy. The well, song my mother's a space cadet. Yeah, well, it wasn't really about her. It was about, you know, my friends' moms and stuff, and we just thought it would Come be Come on, you know it was about Gail. <laughs> One line. Newspaper, is it? <laughs> One line. <laughs> Tell us about your mother. I mean, now, people have now met your father. They've met you. They would like to know about your mom. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's a nice lady. Um, yeah. Come on, guys. Now, now see, it's, it's, it must be very difficult for you. Now, you're not going to tell on her. It, it has to be difficult for you. Your father is real comfortable with this label of being weird. Are you comfortable with having a father who's associated with that, and do you have to kind of rise to the occasion as well? Uh, I try to be pretty weird, don't you? I Lisa? love to be weird. Yeah, we're pretty <laughs> we're weird. We're all weird. <laughs> Do the names Terrifically help? Terrifically weird. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the names help a lot, I think, yeah. <laughs> Do you consider yourselves a typical American family? Absolutely not. Oh, I'd say definitely. We watch TV and everything. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'd say we're mix and match. <laughs> Uh, now, tell me about the, your father as a, as a father. I'm a middle-aged Italian guy with four kids. I write music. Or what is he like around the house? And Well, you know, the usual sadomasochism. No, he's, he's a normal guy. I mean, really. You see, other kids had, you know, banker daddies and doctor daddies. You had a zappa daddy. Was that rough? Um, no. Don't lie now. <laughs> No, I guess the only difference is, you know, uh, we got to go down to a studio and, and fool around with the equipment. Well, when other kids were talking about their daddies, how did you describe yours and <laughs> what he did and does? Is he a little offbeat with your thing? Um, nah. Really strict. No. Really? <laughs> Makes us friends, listen but... to like classical music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, I get that Aria the shoe shoe because when, when she, the shoe was number one, and when she was little, she used to dance to uh, all Stravinsky records and us. I mean, didn't know what it was, but she would dance to it. But now it's all over. Now heavy metal. I like yeah. to dance to that fast. I don't know. When you play, and look when what you... it did to her hair. <laughs> When you when you bring friends over to the how old are you? Do, do you mind? Fourteen. Fourteen. So we bring uh, boys home to meet uh, your dad. Is that strange or not? Yes, he, 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 I bring them home and and Frank looks at them, shakes their hand, asks asks them questions, and you know if they're okay, you know, <laughs> it's all right. First of all, how do you introduce Frank? Like your friends when you you know if someone comes over. You see, <laughs> yeah, friends of Frank. Larry, Frank, Larry, 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 Larry Frank. Frank. Right, yeah. How are you doing? I go back to work. They go up to the kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, now what, now what, uh, uh, do you, what constitutes okay for you? Have you, I mean, anybody not make the cut? Well, she had a guy over the other, the other day that I didn't like too much. Yeah. I didn't like him either. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I, I wouldn't want to embarrass him by, by singling him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so. But he, that's the only one that she's brought to the house that I didn't like. Yeah. And only because he was, uh, like a wise guy type. Kind of a, yeah. When you work in a studio, when, when you get, do you ever help your father with any of his work? Do you ever, or does he yeah. let he you in? He won't let us. He won't let you in? No. We make butter, we, you know. <laughs> we have a cottage industry. Yeah. <laughs> the, what what kind of guidelines do you set as a parent? Well, give me an example. Give like, me let's say they're going out. They're going out at night. Well, I like to know who they're going out with. I like to know where they're going. I like to know when they're coming home. And I like to make sure they do come home. Other than that, what they do when they go out there is left up to their own devices. <laughs> Well, isn't it, isn't it like, you know, do you ever find yourself doing the things that you didn't like done when you were a kid? Like, where are you going, who are you going with, where are you going to be, what time are you coming home? Well, I try not to, but, you know, ultimately you have to be worried because we do live in California and you know what kind of people they have out there. That whenever you go into the street, there are certain dangers that a person is exposed to in a psychotic environment. <laughs> Charlie, 
This portion of the program is very important. This is Moon Unit Zappa. Yay! <laughs> Moon Unit is at a, Moon Unit Zappa, the daughter of Frank Zappa, of course. Frank will be calling in during the show. Mm -hmm. But your father is not feeling well. He is he has cancer. Yeah, he has cancer. But he is calling in. He has agreed to call in, which I'm very proud of. Because I don't think he's done many interviews recently. That's true, but cancer doesn't stop you from being able to make phone calls, so it's, it's, that can happen. That's going to happen now. Frank, can you hear me? Yep. We were just, uh, Frank's voice, <laughs> we're looking up for Frank. We hear Frank's voice. <laughs> I just asked Moon, did, uh, did you ever yell at her when she was a kid? No, you didn't. Did you, Daddy? I don't think so. I don't remember you ever doing it. Treated you as a friend? Yeah. And Frank, how are you feeling now? Of course, we've all read that, that you have cancer, prostate cancer. Yeah, I feel okay. You feel good today? Yeah, this is a good day. But the, the, the thing is, to me, that, that that is an operable kind of cancer, right? I mean, prostate cancer is one of those cancers you read about that that kind of, they could, you know, there's a high cure rate, isn't there? Uh, if they catch it in time. And, and you never caught yours in time? I mean, you let it wait? Over a period of years, I had urinary problems and was examined, and they didn't find it. And so uh, that's, that's why it came as such a shock to me when they told me that I had it because I'd had urinary problems for a number of years. And uh, you can imagine how irate a person might be when uh, you are informed that, yeah, you got it, and we can't operate on it. Was it that they missed uh, finding this in you? Uh, yeah. And what about Moon? Is Moon in the... Uh, you living at home? No. You're not? I live a short distance away. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to leave the nest, Howard. That's what's happening. I'm trying to not take money from my family. Frank, are the kids able to support themselves? Um, to a degree. They are? Yeah. So the point is we have to get Moon a job. Right. Is that correct? That would be good, really. That would be good right now. Yeah. And the point is that uh, you are proud of your children. You <laughs> like the people that they turned out to be. But at the same point, you would like them to stop leaching off you. Is exactly. That correct? Get a life. <laughs> <laughs> because it's got to be upsetting to you. Now, Do you know so, how hard it is to get my dad to laugh, Howard? Uh, your father laughs plenty at me. He calls me a buffoon, I believe. <laughs> but, but Frank, I can't believe how good you sound. I, I of course, uh, am concerned for you, and I'm, I'm glad that you, you're, you're feeling better? Yeah, I'm feeling better. And uh, the, the thing is that um, uh, you have to go for chemotherapy treatments and stuff like this? No, I don't. Uh, you know, I can't do chemo. You can't? No. Why? It's because it because it's, uh, doesn't work? It doesn't do any good. And you, and by the way, you never took drugs or anything like that, right? No. But you were a smoker. Yeah, still do you, am. Do you think you still smoke? Yeah. And I would say, to me, a cigarette is food. Tobacco is my favorite vegetable. And drugs are? It's usually I say that the taking of drugs is a license to be an a which is the same reason why people drink. Now, I admire that. <laughs> Most people are hypocrites. They, will, they stop smoking if they get cancer. They say, am I correct, Frank? Well, I don't know about people who have cancer. I don't hang out with them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm... I guess it's not a happy group. <laughs> yeah, right. generally not. But the point is that you still smoke. Yeah. You say the hell with it. I might as well. Well, I do it because I like it. And I and um and I appreciate you taking this time out to be with us. All right. Thanks a lot. Honey. All right, Frank. I'll see you. Bye, Daddy. Bye, All right, bye, Talk to you later. All right. There's, that's Frank Zappa. Now, when we come back. Can you look at your kids and say, God, they're talented, or do you feel you're too close to them and too loving? And no, I can look at them and say, yeah, they're talented. Yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. You have both followed in his musical footsteps, not necessarily in his satirical footsteps. Uh, are you going to perform together, or is that just a one-shot <laughs> No, I, I don't think so, but uh, <laughs> this may change. <laughs> Who knows? You were also a, a, a parent, and by today's standards, you must have done okay in that your kids are not on drugs and not, in, not jail. in jail. That's right. Not on drugs, not in jail. I did all right. You did, can you take, claim credit for that? Or were you just lucky, maybe? No, 50%, because I think that maybe less, because my wife certainly had a large uh, role in making the kids turn out. Yeah. 
Frank, what values have you tried to instill in Moon? Well, I think that the best value that you can instill in somebody is uh, honesty. It's probably the, um, it's the forgotten American value. That and craftsmanship. Those are the two things that are being bred out of the American culture right now. So if you're a, an American and you're waiting for somebody to say good morning to you like this, and you're sitting there at a very susceptible time of the day, and you have children and you're wondering what to do with them, try and raise them to be honest. And whatever business they're going to be in, try and remind them about craftsmanship so that maybe in the future, American goods and American things will be respected all over the world.